and welcome to ET Auto. When it comes to electric mobility, usually uh, it's better to keep EVs away from water and more so if it's a EV charger, EV charging station. But here is one uh, tech startup which uses water as the secret ingredient of its uh, industry leading uh, tech proposition of uh, charging vehicles in 15 minutes flat. Well, let us learn more about this uh, technology strategy from the CEO and founder of the startup, Exponent Energy, Arun Vinayak. Arun, tell us, how did you come up with this idea and uh, what, what triggered this idea and how did you come say, okay, yes, this is the one which will help us being a differentiator in the market and also address this, uh, give a kind of industry leading uh, charging time. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, thanks so much for having me. Uh, you know, we've been building EVs in India for 10 years now. And uh, the phase one was about just getting vehicles to be better on the drive side. Today, they are EVs are better in every regard. What's holding us back is everything on energy. How long does it take to charge? Will my battery last? Uh, the cost of, all, of it all. So I think it was very clear to us that if you can solve energy for EVs, make energy for EVs super simple, super seamless, and also affordable, we can get everyone to go electric. Then there's really no reasons holding you back from going electric. Right? The lack of freedom is the biggest problem. And to that, we realized it has to be similar. The experience of owning an EV has to be similar to a diesel vehicle. Right? And then the Indian reality is none of us park at home. So we can't actually park and charge at home. And we can't afford large batteries. So unlike the West, where everyone's chasing energy density, is giving you larger batteries, charging at home capabilities. We realized India needs really small batteries to make the price point work. And also really quick public charging to get in, get out, recharge equity fuel. So I can make the flexibility work. And this tech ingredient of water, how did you stumble upon it or how did you come Oh, up? that's almost a constraint, right? Uh, we wanted to deliver ultra fast rapid charging without increasing the price point of the vehicle. In fact, we want to reduce the price point of the vehicle, right? Uh, and when you generate, when you charge a vehicle in 15 minutes, you generate a lot more heat yeah. than slow charging. Heat is I square R, right? So if you're going from four hour charging to 15 minute charging, it's 16 times more current, but it's 256 times more heat. Right? And ideally, you want to keep the cell at 25 to 35 degrees Celsius, as against engines, where you're allowed to keep it at 90 degrees, 100 degrees Celsius. So while li regular liquid cooling works for IC engine vehicles, for EVs, you actually need an advanced HVAC system, which costs a couple of lakhs. Most advanced passenger EVs in the West actually have this on the vehicle, and including they can afford Tesla, it. Tesla. In, yeah, well, including Tesla. And they can afford it because the price points. Right? In India, this vehicle itself is just a couple of lakhs. Right? So I can't afford to put this HVAC system on the vehicle. So we decided off-board. Right? We want to keep the vehicle simple, lightweight, affordable, and move the complexity to the charger. Because this gets amortized over 20, 30 vehicles. So the cost structures work better. How much does the charger like this cost? This charger costs 5 lakhs and okay. can charge almost 40 to 50 vehicles a day. Okay. And your, if I have to kind of now make your vehicle your compatible to your charge, this whole uh, tech uh, suite, including the battery pack, connector, and the charge, how much will it cost? Let's see. Yeah, so if you look at it overall, the cost of owning a vehicle powered by exponent is 30% lesser. Why? Because with rapid charging, there's no need, there's no more range anxiety. So you can put in smaller batteries, makes the vehicle significantly lower price upfront. Because we have a 3000 cycle warranty, we have done the industry first fire financing solution. So my monthly EMI is almost 30% lesser than any other vehicle. And then you don't have to buy this charger. We actually set up these chargers, these e-pumps uh, in every city and you can tap in, charge, how many you need to charge, pay for the units. You consume pay per use, pay per use, right? And because of the same piece of land, we are selling more energy than any other charging station. Our cost of energy comes down. Most public charging stations today have to charge you 24 to 28 rupees per unit, right? It's ridiculous. We are charging sub 16 rupees per unit of energy. So it's the fastest and also the cheapest energy. That you and coming to the water ingredient in the whole charging system, you are pumping uh, energy. You are, you are pumping electricity, yeah. you are pumping water also. Yeah. So uh, how does that mechanism work? Could you very, could you very uh, briefly explain? Yeah, so we just plug it in. Um, and and what, uh, when you say, you know, HVAC system. So I, I assume that it has a, it's a refrigerated water. Right? Refrigerated water. What, what, the, what the temperature? The yeah, water. so the water actually pumped in is at 10 degrees Celsius, right? Which allows to keep the battery at 25 degrees Celsius. Uh, so we maintain the delta T. Uh, so when you put in a connector, there are three things that happen. First is the signal pins connect. Then the power pins connect and the fluid pins connect. And then we have a locking. So once it's locked, once there's a calibration on both ends, we start charging. We know which battery we're charging. We have a unique virtual model of every cell. So while charging it, the BMS is ensuring the cell doesn't get damaged. But at the same time, a lot of heat is getting generated. So we're pumping all that water. It's a five bar pressure that 
system that we created. And it's pretty cool. No other industry in the world actually makes and breaks fluid circuits in the field. So on a daily basis, we actually make this fluid coupling, pressurize it, charge it, and depressurize it, and release it. So, so this is a, a, you must have filed a patent for it? Is it yes, a, we filed a lot of patents. India-wide patent or global patent? Or? Uh, we've, we filed a lot of patents. Most of them are India-focused. We will look at expanding them soon. Okay. So uh, tell me one thing. With this, uh, okay, I can you know, uh, kind of get my get get rid of the in range anxiety with this a 15 minute charging proposition. Only if my vehicle has this, your battery pack, your connect connector, and gets charged in your yeah. But that also kind of in a way goes contra to the idea of democratic democratizing technology, doesn't it? I mean, which in in a way would also kind of you know, have a bearing on the. Uh, Adoption of mass scale, adoption of mass scale uh, electromobility. Absolutely. You know, we're not here to democratize technology. We're here to democratize EVs. We're here to democratize energy for EVs. You want to make EVs have maximum flexibility, maximum freedom, and the lowest cost of energy across both batteries and chargers. To do that, you have to rapid charge. And if I want to rapid charge, it's not just a question of setting up a charger. Because the battery needs to be able to accept the energy without degrading. And vice versa. I can't just build a random battery and expect that it will get rapid charge because the network can't support it. Actually, in India, if you, even if you hypothetically build a battery that charges in 15 minutes, the network can, will still take an hour to charge in any other network. So cross compatibility, I think while it sounds nice, right, uh, it, it sort of is a network that works for everyone, but it doesn't work really, really well for anyone, right? And we believe for commercial vehicle segment, rapid charging is non-negotiable. So we're ultra sharp focusing on that and ensuring that they have the fastest charging at the lowest price point possible. And so therefore, what will your focus be mainly on the commercial vehicles, uh, vehicles in various uh, segments of the commercial vehicle industry, or at some point, basically, you know, how yeah, do you so, plan to expand here on? You know, for the next 24 months, it's commercial vehicles of all sizes and form factors, three wheelers is the, just the first point. We're doing a bus in six months. We'll talk more about it soon. Um, and in all of this, uh, we've realized that the quickest way to build the largest network in the least amount of capital is commercial vehicles. If I want to set up 1,000 charging stations and ensure they're breaking even, get commercial vehicles to charge it. Right? So we've realized commercial vehicles is the best market to build the network on. Once we have the network, I think we'll talk about other categories. And the same network can serve maybe passenger vehicles also in the at, at the right time. But today, it's commercial vehicles. A 1,000 network point, how long do you think it will take? I think uh, by 2025 in the top six cities. Uh, uh, as, you, as you expand, are you also looking at uh, raising any further funds? Uh, not right now. We, I think we're well capitalized and we will definitely talk about that in the future. And going by what the prospects in the industry is and your uh, are and, uh, and your own plans, uh, when do you plan to break even and kind of, uh, get into the <laughs> Break even is a hard question for any founder to talk about. Uh, but I think energy is a very valuable business. Mm -hmm. And uh, because we're able to have such disruptive unit economics for everyone in the ecosystem, not just us, fleet operator, the OEM, the charge point operator, because we're able to create a win-win-win model, I think we're going to be able to get there much faster with a far, far lesser capital than what you would imagine. Uh, so I think two years away. Okay. On that note, Arun, pleasure talking to you. All the very best. Thank to you so you, much. To you and your team. Uh, there you heard uh, Arun Vinag, CEO and founder of Exponent Energy, talking about his, uh, his startup's uh, tech proposition, of which water is a very interesting component. And uh, as the industry progresses, uh, uh, technology startups have uh, good opportunities to be uh, you know, making a big impact, a you know, positive impact on the overall uh, growth of the industry, especially EVs. So we'll keep a track of uh, this space as as well as we do in other uh, segments of the auto, auto industry. So keep, keep uh, watching this space on epauto.com. Thank you for watching this episode of Technology Talks. Goodbye.